So here's what we're going to do. All quadrilaterals share, as it were, some DNA, which is that they all have four sides, they're all straight, four angles, that kind of thing. Okay? So what we're going to do is try and tease out the relationships between these, because in the textbook what you'll find is a list of shapes, okay? but that list is just kind of like, here's a random grab bag of things that have nothing necessarily to do with each other. Okay? Jacob, you're paying attention. Thank you. So what we're going to begin with, up the top of the family tree, is kind of like the big great-grandfather of everything, which is just a four-sided polygon. That's as basic as you can be and still be a quadrilateral. Okay? And what I'm going to show you is the descendants of this guy as we add more and more specific features or characteristics. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is that if we take our four-sided polygon, and we make a pair of sides parallel, parallel sides, just one pair. So I'm going to say parallel sides, there are two of them. Okay? If you have a four-sided polygon and there's one pair of parallel sides, there's two sides that are parallel, what kind of shape do you have? Trapezium. It's a trapezium, very good, let's label that in. Trapezium, like so. And so this shape you can see is more special than this one. It's got this characteristic in it, okay? So it's a trapezium. But we can add more features and make things more specific, okay? So for example, if I go to the trapezium and I add another pair of parallel sides, right? Now think, think carefully. So now I don't have two, I've got two pairs or four, right? This is the shape we created before, right? The inside shape. This has got so many parallel sides. This is called a parallelogram. By the way, a parallelogram is a really commonly misspelled word. It's really not that hard. Write the word parallel, and then you say o-gram. That's it. If you can't spell parallel, then refer back to earlier points, OK? Parallelogram. OK, now. Shh, 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 shh. I'm now going to hand it over to you for a second and ask you, we're going down this tree, right? If you take a parallelogram, let's add some features to this. What kinds of features could we add to this to make it a more specific kind of shape? Because you know all kinds of shapes. Yeah, what would we add? Okay, if we take our parallelogram, in fact, if we just add a single right angle, I want you to picture, right? Here's a parallelogram, right? Pick an angle, any angle. Say, say this one in the corner, OK? What would I do to this shape to turn that angle into a right angle, as Kate suggests? Well, you'd kind of, you'd kind of lean it over, wouldn't you? you sort of like turn it and pull it that way, right? Well, as you do so, do you notice this becomes a right angle, but so does everything else. Do you notice that? So if what we put in here is one right angle, OK? All of the angles become right angles, right? Which is why we literally call this shape right angle, except we call it in Latin. The, uh, the Latin phrase for right is rect, as in like correct, or when something is wonky and you rectify it. Rectangle literally means right angle. <laughs> not, um, not get rect, um, though maybe you should. OK, so that's fine. <laughs> What else could we do? What else could we do? Um, let, let's keep going from the rectangle. Can you make the rectangle more special? What could you do to it, Arian? Okay, so see how we've got parallel sides up here? So that's about the direction of the sides. But Arian's making a suggestion about the length of the sides. So let's add in equal sides. Equal sides. What does this create? It's a square. Now. The square is the most special of all of the quadrilaterals. So that's why you can see I've drawn it at the bottom. There's, there's no more that we can add to make it more super special. That's it. Okay. Uh, and what I want you to point out, before we finish this diagram, because it's not complete yet, every shape down here carries with it all of the properties above. Right? That's, that's why it's a family tree. So for example, see the square? It, it's got right angles. Yeah. Uh, it also has two pairs of parallel sides. Does that make sense? Look at a rectangle. It's got everything above it. It's got one pair of parallel sides, doesn't it? In fact, it's got two. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So every square is also a rectangle. Every rectangle is also a parallelogram. Every parallelogram is also a trapezium. You get the idea. Okay? Now, this diagram is, um, I can't go any further, but there are some shapes missing. There are shapes you know that aren't on here. What's missing? Okay, so I heard rhombus. Now, just pause for a minute. Put your pen down and actually think. Don't shout it out. I want you to think. The rhombus belongs in this family tree. The question is, where does it belong? Remember, if I put something lower, that means it has all the properties of all the shapes above it. Okay, so where would it fit to place the rhombus? What do you think? Jacob, where would you put it? Jacob suggested to put the rhombus off the parallelogram. Now, what would we do to a parallelogram to turn it into a rhombus? It's actually already on the board. Ha look closely. A rhombus is a parallelogram with equal sides, right? And what's really nice about this, this is you can see the relationships now. Just like we went from parallelogram to rhombus, Jacob nailed it in one, we could go from rhombus to square. Think carefully, what would we add? A right angle, right? Can you picture it? Look, here's my, um, here's my parallelogram. Let's turn this into a rhombus. So here's a rhombus. All the sides are equal. It's a square that's kind of been pushed over, hasn't it? As soon as you add the right angle, it turns it into a square. Okay, now this is looking pretty good, but it's still missing something. There's a shape, and someone did say before, a kite. Okay, now think again. Again, I want you to pause and think. Where would the kite belong? Where's the place that makes the most sense? Hmm. Now, remember I said to you before, for instance, um, see this square is down the bottom? So every square is a rhombus. Every rhombus is a parallelogram and on and on and on. Now, can I say that ev every kite, every kite, can I say, I'll make an easy one, is every kite a rectangle? No, no clearly not. Okay, like, oh, let's just draw one for the sake of it. So here's a kite. Okay. Uh, is it, so this is too far down. Is every kite a parallelogram? No. Doesn't, doesn't, mm. Th those don't look parallel to me. Okay, so that's no good. Is every kite a trapezium? Because look, have a look at the sides. I don't think any of them necessarily have to be parallel. Does that make sense? They, they, they're weird and wonky. So if the kite doesn't come from here, which is already second from the top, where's the kite going to come from? It, it ha it's on its own branch. It's got to come from here. Does that make sense? You see how the family works? So let's chuck it over here. It's separate. The kite, a bit of a weirdo, okay? Okay. Um, all along here, the branches indicate what we have to add to the shape to make it such and such a shape. So you've got a quadrilateral. What do you add to the quadrilateral to make it a kite? Think carefully. What is it that makes this shape what it is? Hmm. Now this is actually very tricky, and we're going to dig deeper into this. I'll save you a bit of time. Here's what makes a kite a kite. This, those two sides, those two sides, that's what makes a kite a kite. So therefore, see how down here we've got all equal sides, right? All four, I suppose we could put four. Up here, I've got two pairs of equal sides. Uh, and they don't have to be equal to each other. Which actually tells you, even though it's up there, seemingly off on its own, I'm going to pick up a new color now, the kite actually is related to someone else on this diagram. And I just kind of highlighted it for you just now, right? See how it's about equal sides? It's about equal sides. So what it's closely, not closely, what it's distantly related to is the rhombus, right? How would you turn a kite into a rhombus? Yeah, see how these are equal to each other? We'll just make these equal to each other and bam you're there okay so four equal sides <laughs> something like that okay all right now underneath or beside your family tree uh is it finished what do you think is a square also a kite 
Let's think about that question. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good question. What makes a kite a kite? What makes a kite a kite? Two pairs of equal sides. Does a square have two pairs of equal sides? Answer, yes, it does. And in fact, I've seen square kites before. They're not very common, but yeah, it's a kite. It's a weird kite, but it is. Okay. Um, are there any kinds of shapes we're missing? I will tell you there's a weird one which doesn't come up very much. It's very weird, so you might not have even heard of it, so I'm going to put it in another color. Okay, so this is super weird, that's why I'm putting it off on the side. It's easiest for me rather to describe it. I'm going to draw it for you. Okay, so what does isosceles mean for triangles? Two sides are the same. In an isosceles trapezium, you've got two sides of the same. I don't have to. See this over here? Um, that's a bad example, sorry. See that? That's a trapezium, isn't it? Yeah. But see these sides, they're, they're not matched up at all. They don't have to do anything with each other. But this guy, you see how it's like nice, it's balanced, it's symmetrical. That makes it isosceles. Very uncommon, but um, now the family tree is complete. Okay? 